Peter Shapiro is best known and most influential concert promoter of his generation. He's worked with everyone from Grateful Dead to Lauryn Hill to U2. In his new book, The Music Never Stops, out August 2nd, Shapiro shares his experiences, tips, failures, and what putting on 10,000 shows has taught him throughout his 25-year career. He joins us live. Peter, thanks for being with hey, us. Good morning. Good to be here. I think Chicago. everybody, every teenager would love to be working on concerts and be a concert promoter. How did you get started? Um, well, it sounds fun. Yeah. Until you're doing it. Yeah. Until things go wrong. And then and everything then you falls realize, on you. Well, make you grow up pretty fast. Yeah. yeah. Um, I actually tell young people you can do, you know, what you do to do, um, like the Fairly Well Dead 50 shows we did at Soldier Field. A lot of the same things you have to do, you could do at a small show, let's say in Lincoln Park for 50 people in a bar. You got to book the band, you got to book the venue, you got to market the show, sell tickets. So, really, anyone can put on a show. You can do it small. And, uh, but a lot of the same things, are the, they're the same. Uh, whether it's small or big, you just yeah. gotta create magic. But how did you get, start working with some of those big um, acts? Well, I went to Northwestern. Yeah. I'm here, Chicago. Yeah. 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 And uh, started small. Uh, I did a block party in Evanston, a Hamlin Street block party, when I was 20 years old. Wow. Uh, about 30 years ago. And you just start, you know, small and get bigger. You make relationships, you meet bands, you meet the people in the business. It takes a while, you gotta work hard, and uh, you hope for no rain. <laughs> <laughs> How difficult is the element of dealing with big time rock stars and is there something you learn my daughter something you learn to kind of cope with that well you learn to say yes yeah and how to say yes yeah. and uh, even if you have to kind of go a roundabout way you find your rhythm and their rhythm and you meet there yeah. and rock stars you know you don't want to say no yeah so when they have an idea whether it's a set idea, a show idea, you just gotta figure out how to make it happen. And that's kind of what being a concert promoter is, is just figuring out how to make it work. It's like life. Yeah. We yeah. hear about these riders that people right. have at concerts. Green M&Ms? Yeah, where yeah. they insert fake things in there. How, is there any truth to these crazy riders that people have that they want behind the stage when they have a concert? Um, I haven't seen the green m and m request yeah but again they, they'll sometimes ask for a specific kind of beer or, or juice or you never know you know what it is but again you you know you just have to figure out how to say yes yeah, yeah. if they want a certain kind of beef jerky yeah. you get it you get it it's a little easier <laughs> with the internet now yeah, and all yeah. that yeah. but again it's really about finding that place and meeting them here right yeah and trying to say yes find that rhythm they, they have their way of doing yeah. it and I've tried over the last 25 years to, and they've become friends. Yeah. What you did know? you do with Robert Plant? I mean, I think there, there was oh, yeah. a one incident where you, where you had to like persuade and not yeah. just simply say yes. Well, I actually wasn't fully successful. I wanted to try to get him to play Led Zeppelin again and yeah. do that reunion. So I've done shows like to get to a place to be able to even talk to an artist about that. You got to first do shows with them, earn their trust. Oh, you know, and, and everything in a show has to go right for them to trust you and want to work with you and do more. So I did shows with Robert, solo shows, and you just got to make sure everything about that show goes well so that the, he yeah. hears the feedback from the fans. We love the venue. We love that show. And he's like, Peter, let's do more. <laughs> you know, and I tried, uh, and I'm still trying. You never know what's ahead. Yeah. What's yeah. your favorite backstage story that you tell people? Because I'm sure people ask you that at parties all the time. Well, the best favorite ones we can't talk about yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> um, but the truth is they they're like you know they're the same as us just a little different and um, I try actually backstage you create an environment like that's home that's comfortable and you know you, their families will come or their kids mm -hmm. or their friends and you're hanging out I actually built at the Capitol Theater my venue in New York we have like a room a, a cave a back cave and I'll bring them in, and we got the fish tank, and a hang, and Twizzlers, and some green M&Ms, <laughs> and yeah. some drinks, uh, and yeah. you make them feel like, yo, I wanna come back here. I would imagine some, though, are more down to earth than others. What about you two? Well, you two is, uh, I made a 3D movie with them in South America. 
And uh, we were hoping actually it'd be easier. Here's an example. They wanted to do it in LA. Yeah. When you're shooting a film and yeah. trying to do 3D with you two, sure. LA is where all the equipment is. Right. So you're in a meeting and Bono says, let's do this movie, but let's shoot it in South America in Buenos Aires because the fans there are just wild. Wow. And even though you want to do it in LA and the equipment's in LA, when he says, let's go to South America, you say, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you make it happen. and. Uh, you find that rhythm and you just figure out, then you go back to your team and say good news and bad news. Yeah. We got the movie, but we're going to Argentina yeah. to let's, shoot it. Let's talk about the Grateful Dead. You work with them a lot. Yeah, I mean, I, I so I went to school here in Northwestern yeah. and doing a lot of shows with those guys. That's really, I saw my first Dead show at Rosemont Horizon, 1993. Uh, it was called Rosemont Horizon. Um, and I got the opportunity after working with them to do their 50th anniversary show. And I was the one I really wanted to do it in Chicago yeah. at Soldier Field. Uh, it's their last, the last show in 1995 before Jerry passed away was at Soldier Field. Mm. So I wanted to bring them back. And we did that in 2015, three nights, July 4th weekend. That music never fades. You know, they just played Wrigley Field a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I was there. Yeah. And it's amazing how a band like that, almost 60 years, been together. Those songs, people can keep listening to them and keep listening to them. It never fades away. And, and especially with the world so crazy, you know, we need this stuff. So do you yeah. enjoy going to concerts when you're planning all? I mean, that's the yeah. fun part. Oh, good. You know, doing the show. I'm yeah. going to a show at the Metro tonight. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So um, that's the fun part for me is the live putting on the show when you're there. Yeah. The part during the day of organizing it in the morning when uh, you're dealing yeah. with the email. That's less fun. Right. Yeah. But <laughs> you don't get the fun. Yeah. Right. You don't get that show, that yeah. magic without the hard part. Yeah. Well, the book is called The Music Never Stops. It comes out August 2nd. Thanks so much for being here, Peter. Nice to meet Thank you. Thanks, guys. Rock and roll. <laughs> we'll be right back.